Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to this course on Django. So this course is intended for beginners. So people have not worked with this popular Python web framework. So what I want to do in this one is I want to introduce you to the framework. I want to show you how to get started with it. We will look at the common Django concepts so you guys can get up to speed working on your next web application. So for the things we'll be covering, so we'll look at how to set up the project. I'm going to have two separate videos to set it up, set up virtual environments to run your project on both Windows and also on Mac. So we'll basically examine what Django provides out of the box. Then we'll look at how to work with the user model. So Django comes with this authentication system now. A lot of the times you're going to need to customize it a bit to fit your, your needs. So I'm going to be showing you guys the different ways you can really extend it and have your authentic have that very authentication that Django provides fit to any need that you're going to have. So also look at how to use model forms. So no matter when building a, a web application, you're going to be defining your forms all the time. Now Django has a way that you can basically use these forms without actually creating them. So whenever you create like a model, let's say you have a user with first name, last name, you can quickly generate a form for them by using the Django capabilities. Now we'll look at the messages framework. So the message framework is the way that Django provides that you can use to show messages to the user. So you guys know those alerts that show up whenever a user maybe performs an action. So whenever there's an error, we can pop it up. Whenever there is a success, whenever something succeeds, we can show like a success green message. So Django provides the way to show those. So with every request, so we'll be looking into that. We also look at the Django admin. So Django provides this whole admin section that you can use to basically manage all the data that is created by users on the website. So we'll look at how to log in and register users, basically the whole authentication system that Django provides. I'll also be showing you guys as an extra how to like send activation emails, how to reset users' passwords and all that good stuff. So also look at how to do best, the basic CRUD operations. So Django uses this ORM. So we'll be looking at, how, it's very high level. So we'll be looking at how to basically interact with that. Now, one of the best parts about this is the unit testing part of it. So if you're a seasoned developer and you haven't been testing your code, this is going to be a good way for you to get started writing tests for your Django projects because whenever you work on a project, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be working on it every other day. So a lot of the times you're going to have to spend some time not working on the project and mostly the projects can get really big and you find that you're at a point in time when that when you change something in the code, it's going to somehow affect some other functionality somewhere else in the code. So whenever you have tests for your code, you can be confident that you can do some refactoring, you can change some things and the tests that guard the other code will be letting you know if there's something that your new changes are breaking. So basically testing is like one of the one of the things you can't really do away with if you're going to write a successful application. So Django provides different different decorators to be able to like protect some endpoints from being accessed. So we we'll look at how to create our custom ones. So for example, whenever a user is logged in, we might not want them to access the login page because they're already logged in. So we'll be looking at how to create custom decorators for that. And Django provides actually like some cool APIs to be able to create this. So we'll look at GitHub Actions now. This is some other part that we'll, we'll have to incorporate so that whenever we make new changes to our code and we are pushing it on GitHub, if we want, for example, if we want it to deploy. So GitHub Actions will be allowing us to build, test, and also report coverage for our code. So that means that whenever our build fails, let's say, so whenever our build fails, that would indicate that maybe one of our tests failed or maybe our application is not able to be started. So that can help us to actually catch bugs faster before we push to before we push our code to GitHub for like deployment or, or review. Okay, so we'll be adding these badges here. So this badge is from GitHub Actions. So this shows that, that, that our, the current state of our application was okay, nothing broke before the new code was added. And every time there is an issue, this will fail such that we can quickly tell that something failed and we can go back to our code and fix it. So we'll also work on code coverage. So Python has some utilities to help us know which part of the code, uh, which part of our, so which part of the code in our project is not tested. So whenever we write code, cover coverage gives us some insights on which parts of our code 
are not tested such that we can add unit tests for those. Alright, so it's gonna be some cool series, I believe. So if you're interested to learn more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, put the notification bell on. So for the project you are going to be building, I'm here in the project. So this is so this is the deployed application in Heroku. Of course, I'm gonna be showing you how to deploy it. So Heroku gives us so Hero gives us basically a simple way to, do, to test out our application, so which is cool. Now here I'm logged in. We are going to be doing a simple to do app, so we'll be able to see a list of the a list of the to dos we've created before. Now these are the ones that are created by only this user. So if I logged in to another user, this would be different. Here you will be able to see if one if it's completed or not. And down here we have some filters. So right now we are viewing for all, but if I clicked on completed. You said it's gonna go ahead and filter out the ones that have completed yes the ones that are remaining when we click there you see that it's gonna remove the one where it's not completed and the, when we click on this one it's gonna go ahead and bring all of them now when we click on one we are going to be able to view the details so here on the details we can decide to edit this or delete it now i'm gonna click edit so when we come here this is a form that you would think you'd have to like go ahead and code out the labels the inputs make sure you have the validations make sure you handle these checkboxes so with django we don't have to do that we have something called model forms that we can basically tie a form to uh, to how a model looks like so a model for it to do can have like a title a description and also there is completed field so we just specify the fields and then the form is going to be given to us which is pretty cool so here we can decide to complete this. So if I click complete and submit, you see that now it has this and it's completed. So if we come back over here, you see that now they remain, they completed that two. Previously it was one. So also we can click here and then we will be able to go directly to edit it. Let's say we uncomplete this and come back over here. You see that it's not yet complete. All right, and now they are back here. So here you see that we have, we can show the current logged in user. Now, when I log out, you will notice that we get this fresh message here. So this fresh message is one of those that Django provides us to, that the, the message framework provides. So we'll be looking at how to use that to show these ones. Now, if I came here and change the password and change this password and logged in again, this is that we get invalid credentials try again, which is another one for the error. Now here, a user can create a new account, of course. Let me create a new account. So a new user. I'm going to use new user here at app.com then my password is gonna be that so if I provide here if I provide information that doesn't really match for the passwords and submit you said we are going to go ahead and clear out the passwords and then we are able to persist the user's previous information so users doesn't have to fill them again so let me, let me provide information that is correct so I'm gonna provide good information and then sign up so, so here we we'll have the account created, you can log in. So here I can log in with the new user. So when we get here, you note that the new user is here and we don't have basically any to do. Now we can go ahead and create a to do and that's gonna be the same as how you guys saw. So let me just create one. I'll just do test here and just do some stuff. Then if I submit, so that it's created and when you come back here see that it is there so this is a simple application but it's going to enable us to now know how to do things like testing how to do the querying for django how to work with the whole user user manage how to work with the whole authentication of users so yeah so that's gonna be it and i'll see you in the next video where we are going to be setting up our django project our virtual environment and all that good stuff so thanks guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'll talk to you later.